Hi everyone, uh, in this video I'm going to be talking about um, how to use uh, equally weighted uh, currency indexes to make better trading decisions. And uh, if you're unfamiliar with what a uh, currency index is, uh, the most uh, famous or used one or viewed one is the dollar index, right? And uh, this is an Investopedia and all an index is, uh, the US dollar index is um, a measure of the value of the US dollar relative to a basket of foreign currencies. And so um, the six currencies included in the USDX are often to uh, often referred to as America's most significant trading partners. Uh, but the index has only been updated once in 1999 when the euro replaced the German mark, French franc, Italian lira, Dutch guilda and Belgium franc. Uh, consequently, so consequently, the index does not accurately reflect present day US trade. And so it doesn't represent US accurately represent today's US trade, but also as well, um, it says here that the currencies that are in the US uh, dollar index basket are the Euro, the Yen, the Pound, the Canadian dollar, Swiss franc, um, and the Corona, and also as well, they're not equally weighted, right? So the Euro has um, a 57.6% weight, uh, the Yen has 13.6, and so on and so forth. So um, although it's it's used and and you'll see it in many uh, uh quoted in many publications like bloomberg or the financial times um it seems quite outdated so um there's an equally weighted so there's an equally weighted currency index calculation that we can use and this is uh, not just for the us dollar but you can use this for the euro the pound the yen the cad the australian dollar the new zealand dollar and the swiss franc and these are the currencies uh, that are commonly traded and um and so it gives really more of an accurate picture um as to what uh, the really the strength or weakness uh, of the currency is in comparison to uh, the uh, the major trading pairs that we trade uh, today. And so um, basically what you're doing is you're taking this calculation, so USD EUR times USD uh, GBP, USD JPY, and so on and so forth, the CAD, Australian dollar, the New Zealand dollar, and the Swiss franc. And what you're doing is you're copying that, yeah, if you want to... Uh, put that into your trading view chart. So go to trading view if you're using trading view charts. If you're not, unfortunately, uh, uh, if you're using a uh, MetaTrader, don't know how to how to use that or any other um, uh, trading platform. But if you're using trading view, then what you want to do is basically do a symbol. Uh, click on that symbol search there. Make sure it's on all, and then you're going to paste. Yeah, paste that calculation in, and then press return and then it will take you to the, um, the the calculation, right? And you can see it up at the top here. And what this is, again, this is uh, equally weighted uh, US dollar uh, index. And then what else you wanna do is you want to create a new list, so create new list, yeah? And then call it maybe something like uh, currency index. I just do it CI because I've already created, I've got a list of these already, so just call it whatever you want to call it and then when you want to add it to that um, that list you go add the symbol and then in my newly created currency index I've, I've called it CI but I've already got one here right CI and then it will add to the list right there and then you do the same thing with uh, the rest of these so you just copy and paste the euro and then do the same thing, and so on and so forth. With the yen, uh, you need to times it by uh, this number. I think it's one with a um, uh, 15, uh, 15 zeros, I think it is. Uh, the reason why, if you're using the RSI indicator, uh, if you don't use uh, this number, then uh, the RSI indicator won't display properly. So you'll need that number. If you're planning on using the RSI indicator, then um, you can just basically, um, use uh, the calculation from the beginning until the end of JPYCHF. Um, so 
once you've done that and you've created your list, which I have my list right here, currency indexes, um, you then can uh, see what the, uh, the the currency as an overall um, is doing against uh, the currency that you're looking to trade it against, right? And so uh, again, it's equally weighted. Now, uh, the next question is, well, how do we use this um, in our in our trading? And so, before we get into really the kind of the technical side of things, it's important to uh, understand that what you want to um, think about whenever looking at uh, trading currencies is let's say we're trading the euro dollar right you've got the euro and you've got the dollar now it's important um, really to buy low and sell high right and so you're trying to buy that if you think that the euro is going to go higher ultimately what you're saying is is that the euro should be going higher or should increase in value and the dollar should decrease in value that is going to be the uh the really the, the number one trade right that that would be the the, the most highest probability trade and, and reason why prices are likely to trend and if you think if you think that the dollar is going to increase in value and the euro is going to decrease in value then you're looking at something like this um now if both currencies are seen as uh, both strong, for example, or both weak, then you're likely to see price do something like this. There's no direction because both currencies are seen as uh, as equal, either both appreciating at the same time or both devaluing at the same time, and you're likely to see the market and price uh, go in this uh, in, in this type of direction. Now. The, the, the best trade that you can possibly have um, and confluence you can have is, as I said, when you think that price uh, for the uh, euro is going to go uh, is going to go up or appreciate and the currency you're trading it against is likely to go lower or devalue. And so what you're looking for really is a turning point at with, with the euro and turning points at the uh, with the uh, dollar. And so what does that look like? So on the euro, you're looking for bargain prices, right? You're not looking to trade at highs. You're looking to, to buy at lows and sell high. And the same thing with the with the dollar. If you're looking at uh, shorting the dollar, you're looking at the to short the dollar at highs, right? And so from a euro perspective, yeah, if we're looking at the euro index, then you should be looking at something where if you're buying the euro where there's an established low, and then what you're looking for is uh, for the euro to come down to uh, something like here. In fact, let me just um, move this a bit lower, right? So you're looking for on the on the euro index for this to go higher from a an established low or a demand zone or you know support zone, yeah. And at the same time, you're looking for the dollar to be at an established high and for it to go lower, yeah, and devalue. So you're looking at the same time for the euro to be at a low and go higher and for the dollar to be at a high and go lower. That is likely to push the euro dollar to highest to trend higher and vice versa if you're looking at obviously uh, the euro uh, dollar to go lower where you're buying the uh, the dollar you want you want actually the dollar to be at a demand zone and you want the euro to be at a supply zone or some sort of uh, resistance yeah so that is the best confluence that you uh, can can get now, we have to also understand which highs and which lows are we uh, we talking about. And so, on trading view, there is there are the options at these, the bottom left hand side. And you can see one D, five D, one M, three M, six M, Y T D, and one year, five year, and uh, and all. And so, one of the time frames that I look towards is as my default is the monthly, 
right? So I'm looking at the monthly time frame, and right now we're on the uh, the dollar index, yeah. And so I'm looking at the uh, where the highs and lows are for the month over the past month, and you can do this. You can use this on a you know five day if you want to, or the quarterly, the the, the one monthly and the three quarterly are the two time frames that I uh, look at most. Of course, you can look at the uh, the six month and the, and the yearly as well. We can even go down to the five day, and apply this uh, same uh, logic. Um, and so, if I'm looking at, for example, uh, a monthly low, right, a monthly low, I'm ex and I want to be a buyer of the dollar. Yeah, I'm expecting on the euro index. Yeah, for the euro to be at some sort of high now. The, the red line and the green line is just um, where you've got 80% discounts. And it makes me know that we're near, you know, obviously uh, the uh, highs, right? Depending on which way uh, you're buying and selling, so premiums and discounts. Um, and so I want to see the euro up somewhere around here in order for me to look for uh, a trade on the euro dollar. By the way, well, just a, as a reminder, 50% between what would be considered a high, which is here, and a low, which is here, uh, would be considered fair value, right? So that is either a premium and a discount if you're looking at that from the from buying the uh, the the uh, dollar, um, and vice versa. If you're looking to sell the dollar, then actually that would be more of a premium, and this would be more of a discount, right? To sell the dollar. 50% of highs and lows, obvious highs and lows, monthly high and low would be known as fair value. So um, if I'm buying the dollar, right, I'm only looking really for uh, for price to come around fair value and lower. And the lower it comes, the better the, better the discount. And obviously my uh, bias on this is driven by my fundamentals and uh, understanding um, why I'm looking to buy the dollar. I'm not looking to just base my buys and sells off, off of what price action is doing in the short term or even the medium term. So um, in this example, uh, and I took this trade as well, it was on around the 27th, 28th, actually it was the 28th, the first day of, uh, of December, 2023. Um, I actually uh, took a short trade on the Euro dollar. And you can see, here that the euro, sorry, the dollar was actually at lows. Now, some of you might look to, you know, and say, well, how do you know whether you was at any kind of uh, low trade um, or low price, previous low price? And if I zoom back out actually to the six month, what you'll be able to see, the six month high, six month low, right? High, low. So where the dollar was cheap, it's previously cheap around here, and it was expensive up here. So it was a premium up here and it's discount down here you can see over the last six months where prices had come into so I was using the six month uh, time frame as my uh, reference and so uh, fundamentally I want to be a buyer of the dollar uh, for various reasons and if we now look at the euro yeah the euro index I'm expecting you know the euro for the best really the best trading opportunity um, I want the euro to be at or close to an expensive area. So, you know, the, uh, the look around, we'll look around the Wednesday the 27th and Thursday the 28th and see what the euro was doing there on the euro index. And you can see around the 27th, and this is again looking back at the monthly time frame, where were we? We were in, you know, that expensive area. Yeah, for the euro. So remember, I want to be a seller of the euro and I want to be a buyer of the dollar. And so when prices uh, came up into this area, into this expensive area on the euro, yeah, and it was in a bargain, what I consider the bargain price on the dollar, then going to the euro dollar on that, around that same time, um, we had this price action here, right, which eventually led to this trade uh, going to the downside. Now, again, looking to the left, you might say, well, Leon, what was your uh, reference? What was it a supply zone? Was it support and resistance, both, etc." So if we zoom out uh, and look at this from the uh, from one year, this was a supply zone, yeah, that 
was here, yeah, which also as well had some confluences, one of them being a level of support and resistance, previous resistance, resistance, resistance. The prices have come up into that supply zone with that area of resistance where we know for a fact institutions have been doing you know business. We had uh, some RSI extremes on there as well. Uh, prices have been going higher and higher, um, low liquidity over Christmas. And so there were lots of things that were lined up. And so when prices came up into this area here, yeah, at the time, it was really just about understanding again where I was, where what prices were doing and where they were cheap in terms of the dollar on the sixth month. Uh, or zooming out really from July, we had demand there. And then with the euro, looking at the euro also from a monthly perspective, I mean, zooming out, even looking at the free monthly, we were still more in the kind of expensive area. Yeah, but it was at a monthly high, which this was considered, let me zoom in a bit, this was considered uh, absolutely expensive for the euro. And we saw this major drop to the downside. And because nothing had changed fundamentally, in my view, um, this was a nice area to look for uh, short trades. And that basically played out on the euro dollar as a trade right here to the downside. So just applying that logic and that same um, criteria to all of your trades, rather than just looking at a random level on a on a, um, on a currency pair, let's say, for example, you're looking at that level there, yeah? Now, if prices do come back down here and you want to be a buyer of the euro, against the dollar, what you want to see is the euro at um, at a bargain price, really, on the uh, the euro index or somewhere at least around fair value or below. And then you also want to see the dollar index uh, at an expensive area or at least above its fair value going into the expensive area. So it's not just looking at the level and saying, I want to be a buyer of this, because if you have a situation where prices come down here and the euro is um, is in an expensive area already on the uh, euro index, yeah, um, then you're really just buying at heights because remember, you're trying to buy cheap, buy the euro for cheap, right? That's what you're attempting to do. If on the euro index prices come down, but it's seen as being up here on the euro index at a level, yeah, at a high, a previous resistance or a previous uh, supply zone, then that's not really the, the time to take this trade. Or and even if the trade might work out, it wasn't necessarily the best trade to take because on the euro equally weighted index and the euro against all other currencies, you were buying at an expensive, you were buying at premium prices. And so you that's something that you don't want to do. So you can ignore that level until you get a situation where the euro is at a bargain price across the board and the dollar as well is at an expensive price across the board or at least at a value areas where you would consider um, you know buying uh, below or above fair value so that's how to use the uh, currency equally weighted currency index whenever you take a trade um, on a on a prayers just look at where you are on those equally weighted indexes and uh, you'll make better trading decisions and um, in alignment with fundamentals um, you shouldn't go wrong too often all right guys take care and speak to you soon